Go where culture is, but like New York, or at least snow. Connecticut. Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. So today's video, I'm doing another two-parter. My last two-parter, which was all about the working class, went down really, really well. So this two-parter is gonna be all about daddy and mummy issues. Within both men and women, sort of very small outline of the psychology, but it's mainly focusing on how it affects people's personalities and future relationships, and also representation in pop culture and discussion about it within social media. So today's video is gonna be all about mummy issues, and the second part will be all about daddy issues. So make sure if you're not subscribed already to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss the second part to this video. I feel like like I say this with every video, but I did find this video quite challenging just because I am someone who actually doesn't have mummy issues. Um, of course, me and my mum have our moments. I think everyone has moments with their parents. Me and my mum very much have a very unorthodox relationship. <laughs> it's not like we're gal pals and like, you know how people are like, oh my God, my mum's my best friend. Like, it's not like that, but I can be very honest with her. We've had a very open and honest relationship. And I think that's why there seems to be next to nearly no underlying tension. And I do just want to disc claim that I am not a therapist, as you can tell by the way I'm dressed. <laughs> I found a majority of this information online, in books, in documentaries, and I am just mainly want to have a discussion about it. This isn't an advice video, but feel free if you guys want to share your stories or your advice in the comments. And before I do get into it, I would just like to thank Honey for sponsoring today's video. Honey is a free browser extension that finds promo codes for you and automatically applies them to your cart. I do a majority of my shopping online and the most annoying part about it is literally hunting through the entirety of the internet to look for coupon codes that aren't expired. But with Honey, the codes are automatically applied to your cart without you even needing to look for them. So let's say you're shopping online, you go to check out, the Honey button will pop up. All you need to do is click on apply coupons and Honey will take just a few seconds to find the best coupons for that site. For example, I was on on my protein the other day and I was buying some vegan vitamins and protein shakes and I saved £21 from my £61 order using Honey. Honey supports over 30,000 online stores such as Pretty Little Thing, Princess Polly, Etsy, Fiverr, Domino's and a lot more. So make sure you install Honey for free to save money and it only takes a few seconds. And make sure you use my link which is joinhoney.com slash jordantheresa that is joinhoney.com slash jordantheresa because not only are you guys going to be saving money but you're going to also be doing me a huge favour and supporting my channel. Thank you again Honey for sponsoring today's video. So to look for the definition of mummy issues I had to go to my personal favourite website Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Urban Dictionary is like an ex-boyfriend, you can't help but go back to them. The Urban Dictionary definition of mummy issues is actually the exact opposite of being a mama's boy. Just like having daddy issues is the opposite of being a daddy's girl. A guy who didn't have a mother figure or that hasn't had a close relationship to her lacking motherly care. Obviously, mummy issues is not exclusive to men the same way that daddy issues is not exclusive to women, especially in the last five, 10 years. There has been much more of an open discussion about mummy issues within women. The almost sort of creator of daddy and mummy issues, the founder, if you will, was obviously Freud with the Electra and Oedipus complexes. Obviously, I don't agree with the conclusions in which he came to, but he did sort of start the conversation of how much your relationship with your parents can impact you as a person. Having mummy issues basically means having a problematic or toxic relationship with your mum. It's not exclusive to just one gender, both women and men can have mummy issues, and also it isn't just related to abandonment. It can also relate to other things like overbearing mothers, unaffectionate mothers, but I will elaborate more later in the video. Although for decades when mummy issues has been discussed it's been mostly related to mothers and their sons and how sons can carry their mummy issues into their future relationships with women if they're straight, but I'd say in the last 10 years especially 
especially in the last few years on social media, people are beginning to focus a lot more on the mother-daughter relationship dynamic. Many people say that sex and gender does not matter with your relationship with your parents. Now, I completely disagree with this. I think that mummy issues can manifest themselves in completely different ways depending on whether you're a son or a daughter. Also, in my opinion, I think that mummy issues and daddy issues are usually completely different. Despite both meaning strained relationships with parents, and this is coming from someone who has major daddy issues, by the way, a majority of rifts that people have with their fathers is usually related to abandonment. You'll very commonly hear from people with daddy issues saying about their dads that they were never there for them or they weren't there enough or they left. And don't get me wrong, I do understand that daddy issues go far beyond just abandonment. And I know some people have daddy issues completely unrelated to abandonment, but it's hard to ignore that a majority of people who do have daddy issues, a majority of it is born out of their father's lack of presence in their lives. I also understand that mummy issues can be born out of abandonment also, despite fathers leaving their children far more than mothers do. But with mummy issues, not only is it not spoken about as much as daddy issues, but it's also more of a criticism of the relationship rather than daddy issues being a criticism of the lack of a relationship. When talking about mummy issues, you often hear people saying their mums were too hard on them or their mums were too overbearing or their mums weren't affectionate enough. You know, their mothers were still there, their mothers were still present, the problem was with their presence. So there is almost this guilt that people feel about criticising their mothers and having mummy issues. Some mothers can literally be emotionally and physically abusive to their children, but when you live with the awareness that your mother has done so much for you and they've given up so much for you, you feel so guilty to criticise them as a person. One example of this is pregnancy. Your mother grew you, carried you for nine months. You were technically once a part of her. And then there's also birth on top of that, which your mum is literally risking her life to have you and goes through the most unimaginable pain just to have you. I think pregnancy and birth alone are enough to not want to make people criticise their mums. And after that, your mum spends the next 18 years raising you, looking after you, caring for you, working for you to put food on the table. And you may even feel more guilty if your mum is also a single mother. So this seems to be why mummy issues have gone unspoken about for so many years. Although I believe both mummy and daddy issues can cause an equal amount of emotional trauma on one person, mummy issues seems to carry around a little bit more stigma than daddy issues. Conversations about daddy issues and the lack of fatherly presence that so many people have had in their lives, that conversation has been occurring for decades and only recently have people began to criticise their mums and even then people feel really really guilty knowing they're criticising someone who gave up so much to have them. And I think a reason why people are so reluctant to be critical of their mothers is because when we're children we are made to think that our parents are absolutely perfect mainly because we are so dependent on them. But as we get older, it's easier to maintain this illusion that your mother is all good and all perfect rather than confront the pain that she's caused you. And mothers often partake in maintaining this perfect image so much that children very often blame themselves when their mother is angry, even if they have nothing to do with it. Their mother can't be angry over something that they themselves have done because they're perfect. How could they get angry? They do everything perfectly. It obviously must be the child's fault. That's what runs through children's heads. And this is why it's so common for children to blame themselves for a multitude of home life problems, anything from divorce and to go as far as physical abuse. And another reason why mummy issues has such a stigma around it is because for a very long time, mummy issues was only related to the mother-son relationship dynamic. And obviously there is such a stigma around male emotion that obviously it wasn't going to be spoken about. And on top of that, because mummy issues is often related to the mother-son dynamic, people tend to forget to question the mother-daughter dynamic. The same way that a lot of people think that only women can have daddy issues, so people fail to question the father-son dynamic. 
how can mummy issues be born? Now there is an absolute multitude of reasons so I'm going to try and get through them sort of as quickly as I can. Abandonment, emotional or physical abuse, a lack of nurturing or love, being overbearing, controlling or smothering, forcing your child to be dependent on you, being overly critical, I've especially seen this in the mother-daughter dynamic, or seeing another parent treat another parent badly. Both mummy and daddy issues can affect an individual very, very deeply. And for the majority of their life, if they go unresolved or unspoken about, and it can also affect their future relationships. Because the relationship you have with a parent is often the first relationship you ever have. So you tend to base all of your future experiences off of that relationship consciously or subconsciously. Coming to terms with how much your relationship with your mother has affected your life, how much it's impacted you as a person, how much it's impacted your friendships and relationships can be really really hard to come to terms with. Hence why a lot of people just tend to suppress their emotions and completely ignore it because it's actually easier to do that. In our early stages of life our attitudes and behaviours often align with what our mother has taught us is right and wrong. Throughout our life our attitudes can change, our behaviours can change but the deep subconscious feelings may remain the same. We often act on new attitudes that sound good but end up feeling really bad afterwards even if we haven't done anything wrong and this bad feeling is usually an unconscious feeling that we've gotten from our mothers who have gotten from their mothers who have gotten it from their mothers so it's a very very difficult chain to break. One small but very common example is promiscuity. Now our mothers may not outright tell us that if you sleep with x amount of people that you're a bad person but your mum can almost imply in indirect ways such as shaming the girl in your year who got pregnant or talking about one of your friends that's had three boyfriends in one year sort of little things like that and female sexual liberation is very popular now we are taught by our peers and our friends that there is nothing wrong with being promiscuous rightly so and we can sleep with however many people we want and it doesn't affect us as a person so our attitude now is there is nothing wrong with promiscuity and our behaviours may line up with our attitudes and we may be promiscuous but we may still feel quite bad about it and the reason is because we've had hammered into our heads our whole lives that promiscuity is bad because of how our mothers influence our subconscious and internal feelings and those feelings those deep subconscious feelings are the most difficult ones to shake off. As I've said earlier mummy issues within daughters and sons seems to affect them differently. So I'm now going to discuss how mummy issues affect men. Mummy issues in men often manifest themselves in subconscious misogyny and a fear of women. Men who grew up with domineering mothers tend to fear strong women in later life, the same way they probably feared their very domineering mother. So anytime a woman shows any sort of strength or assertiveness, they get very, very scared of it. Because of this, men who grew up with domineering mothers, it's very unlikely for them to get into an equal and balanced relationship with a woman later in life. They'll either slip into to being submissive as they were with their mothers or they'll slip into being very domineering to compensate for how submissive they felt around their mothers. Men with mummy issues may look for a partner to act as a mother figure to them subconsciously or consciously to either replicate the codependency they had on their overbearing mothers or to compensate for the lack of mothering they received. Similar to how a lot of people with daddy issues tend to look for a partner who will also act as a father figure. Men with mummy issues may not particularly go for an older woman but they will go for a woman who will sort of nurture them and care for them similarly to how a mother would care for her son and this usually leads to a toxic relationship of dependency and expectations on women to look after men. Even men who have toxic relationships with their mothers may struggle to find a genuine connection with a woman because they feel like they will never be able to find anyone as good as their mum. You can never fully develop a relationship with anyone 
let alone a romantic partner if you are constantly comparing them to your mum. And again, this is probably something that men with mummy issues don't even realise they're doing. This isn't me trying to blame women for men being misogynistic, this is sort of just me providing an explanation of how some men end up misogynistic. Especially if their first relationship with a woman ends up being a problematic one, they tend to deflect this battered relationship onto all women in their lives, including their romantic partners. Mummy issues in men can also lead to a fear of rejection. Obviously this can be applied to daddy issues as well, but I will elaborate more on that in my next video. We are taught from a very young age that no one loves someone as much as a mother loves their child. It's an impossible, indescribable and perfect love. So when a person, a son for example, can't feel that love from their mother, from the person who's meant to love them the most, how can they expect anyone else to love them? This usually goes hand in hand with low self-esteem, as people tend to blame themselves for being unlovable rather than their mothers for not being loving. The relationship dynamic between mothers and daughters has gone unquestioned for years. Any emotions expressed other than love and attachment are very quickly dismissed. Only in the last 10, maybe 20 years have people sort of started openly discussing their mummy issues and the toxic relationships they've had with their mothers. And it's these mixed feelings that really characterise a mother-daughter relationship. A great book to read is My Mother, Myself by Nancy Fry. Friday, this breaks down perfectly why so many mother-daughter relationships end up being really toxic and also why the mother-daughter dynamic is so unique as well. According to Nancy Friday, a main reason why the mother-daughter relationship is so unique and is almost so fragile is when a mother gives birth to their daughter, they don't just see their child, they see themselves. And it's because of this that a lot of the time a mother's self-esteem will influence their daughter's self-esteem. It's very common for women who have bad relationships with their mums to have almost this crippling fear of ending up like them. Our mother is our earliest picture of what a woman is. So if we don't like our mother then we will do everything in our power to try and break ourselves away from them. And as I said earlier I think the main reason why so many people have strained relationships with their mothers is because of the impossible love promise. From the day we're born we are basically taught that our mother's love is so perfect that it's impossible. No one will care for us like our mothers and no one will love us as unconditionally as our mothers. Many women do have children out of loneliness and to have this indescribable bond with their child that everyone talks about. A child will never abandon you, a child will always love you and this does sort of make you start thinking how many children were born out of loneliness and unfulfillment and has this influenced the way that mothers treat their children? And also a lot of women have children out of societal pressure. It is literally drilled into our heads from when we're children. We are not real women unless we have children. And mothers will offer this impossible love to their children because they're lonely and they want to bind their children to them for the rest of their life. And if you don't have this impossible love for your children, then you are deemed a bad mother. But real love, it may not have this binding power that impossible love has. It's not idealised, it's not perfect, but that's what makes it love. When in reality, mothers do love their children, a lot of mothers would die for their children, but a lot of mothers don't really like their children. That sounds harsh. There are times where mothers are so frustrated at their children. They're frustrated about how much they've given up for their children. They almost miss their old life, their freedom. But women are taught that we are not meant to feel this way about our children, that we're meant to love every single aspect of motherhood, which often leads to these feelings of kind of disliking your children a little bit at times. It leaves them uncommunicated between mothers and their children. And obviously, there is a sort of underlying tension bubbling away because so many of these feelings go uncommunicated and on top of that a lot of mothers will often excuse their shitty behaviour with love. I'm being overprotective because I love you. I'm being harsh on you because I love you. 
I'm telling you to lose weight because I love you. And because of this, mothers can't really talk honestly about their feelings with their children. And their children often feel really conflicted about the relationship they have with their mum. Because of believing in this impossible love, you hear your mum talking about it and saying it and telling you how much they have this impossible, indescribable love for you, but you can't really feel it. And as I previously mentioned, it's very common for children to blame themselves for anything and everything when their parents are sad, such as divorce, mental illness, and obviously, as I've said, as far as abuse. Because we are taught that our mother's love is perfect. And this guilt can even stretch as far as to feeling guilty for even being born. You almost feel like a hindrance to your mum because she has no healthy way of expressing her annoyances with motherhood. So often it tends to manifest itself in this passive aggressive attitude towards their own child. And honestly, difficulties begin with the word love itself. It's so vague and ambiguous that no one really knows what it means. And because there are so many meanings, love is often used as a motivation tool for mothers. You're doing all of this hard work as a mother because you love your children. Now, this may be true, but there are other emotions which influence you as a mother, such as anxiety, possessiveness, and rejection. I'm just gonna read a quote from Nancy Friday's book. Spontaneous and honest love admits errors, hesitations, and human failings. It can be tested and repaired. Idealized love ties us because we already intuit that it is unreal and are afraid to face this truth. I do think that this is the reason why I'm lucky enough to not have mummy issues because me and my mum, we've always had a very honest relationship. The love between me and my mum is flawed and we obviously get on each other's nerves but it's real. Women are raised to not healthily acknowledge the emotion of anger. And often a woman's first source of anger is their mum. And this is when anger starts to boil within because women are not taught how to healthily express it. So especially with mother-daughter relationships, there seems to be sort of this passive aggressive underlying tension and energy. And unless this is resolved, this can underlie the relationship forever. There's this out right lie pushed onto women that as soon as you give birth to your child you have this impossible and unfathomable love for them. You automatically love your child and if you don't then you're failing as a mother and you're failing as a woman. Apparently just being a woman means that you carry this inherent wisdom about being a mother and it comes to you naturally and if it doesn't that means that you're a failure of a woman. Most women do want to have children and do enjoy having children but this idea of almost a maternal instinct and everyone being able to be a good mother naturally isn't really true. A lot of mothers don't have extreme love for their children as soon as they're born and this can make them feel really guilty and can lead to depression. It's not just giving birth to the baby that seals the relationship and makes the relationship, it's the nurturing, the raising and the caring for the baby that makes the relationship. Nancy Friday says in her book that mothering is almost a form of self-love because a mother's baby, especially a mother's daughter, she sees it as an extension of herself. When she was pregnant, it was a part of her. And if motherhood does not live up to these expectations, then she must repress these feelings. It's almost as if when you have a baby, you give up autonomy over your emotions. Any sort of emotion must be pushed aside so you can focus solely on raising your child. And this is what makes the mother-daughter relationship dynamic. When a mother gives birth to a daughter, she isn't just giving birth to a baby. She's giving birth to someone who is like her, who will be subjected to all of the same dangers which she has been subjected to. She must protect her, which often leads to overprotection and distrust within the mother-daughter relationship. I did do a lot of research online for this video and obviously not all of these symptoms of mummy issues apply to every single person who has mummy issues, but it is quite common to find these traits within people who have mummy issues. The first trait which a lot of people who have mummy issues may have is being insecure. Don't get me wrong, you can still have supportive parents and be insecure, but you are far more likely to be insecure if you have grown up with a very hypercritical mum. I personally believe that mothers are a lot harsher on their daughters than they are on their sons because when they give birth to a daughter, they don't just see their child, they see themselves and they don't want their daughters to make the same mistakes that they have. But constantly criticising your child with 
little to no praise could not only lead to lifelong insecurities, but it can also lead to your daughter having a very distorted perception of herself. Similar to men, both trust issues in friendships and relationships. As the one person who was meant to love them unconditionally felt like they didn't, then who else is going to love them? And already starting relationships with trust issues, it can lead to people struggling to make emotional bonds with people. Women with mummy issues do tend to be quite sensitive because if you've grown up with a mother who is constantly criticizing and nitpicking at you, any sort of criticism, even if it's a constructive one, can come across as an attack and people will immediately get defensive. There is so much representation of daddy issues within pop culture and social media. I have made a video quite a while ago about the normalization of daddy issues. I don't really agree with everything I said in it, but if you guys wanna check it out, I will leave the link down below. Daddy issues are very heavily represented in film and TV and in music, especially in Lana Del Rey's music. And there is a lot of talk about daddy issues on social media, in particular on Tumblr and TikTok. But in my opinion, a lot of this representation of daddy issues on social media seems to have a very sexualized undertone to it, especially on Tumblr where it's used as an aesthetic, which really annoys me. But I will elaborate more on this point in my next video. I never used to see mummy issues spoken about on social media, even when I was in the prime of my Tumblr reblogging every single daddy issues post I could find. I didn't even really know that mummy issues was a thing. I've only in the last maybe a couple of years have started to see mummy issues be spoken about a little bit more on social media, in particular on Twitter and TikTok. I think a big reason for this is it is much harder to turn mummy issues into an aesthetic like daddy issues was. Like I said, I am gonna talk about this more in my next video, but representation of daddy issues in social media and pop culture and in Lana Del Rey's music, it made it seem like having daddy issues was cool and glamorous and mysterious and edgy, you know, despite all of the really horrible pain behind it. Meanwhile, mummy issues is a lot harder to glamorize, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Every mummy issues post that I found, especially on TikTok, it didn't seem to be in an aesthetic way at all it really did seem like it was coming from a place of like deep, deep pain. And I honestly think what really helped people be more open with their mummy issues was more representation in film and TV shows. I know it sounds obvious, but when someone sees something on TV or in a film, which they really, really relate to, it makes them feel like they're not alone. And it makes them realize that they're not a complete weirdo for having these feelings and that other people are experiencing what they're experiencing. In my opinion, one of the most influential films with which had a very large theme of mummy issues was Lady Bird. It was released in 2018 and it was directed by Greta Gerwig. The film is about a girl named Christine who is in her last year of high school and she's trying to decide what college she wants to go to. And a very important part of the film is her very strained and tense relationship she has with her mum. So many people, especially women, could really relate to the relationship that Christine had with her mum. Christine wanted to leave her small town and go go to a big city university. Meanwhile, her mum wanted her to stay at home for university to save money. And also her mum was very harsh on her and was very hypercritical of her. And in my experience watching the film, it's very hard as a viewer to even criticize Christine's mum because you can see how much she does for her. And I think that's why Lady Bird is not only one of A24's most popular films, but also a lot of girls and women's favorite films is because it portrays the mother-daughter relationship dynamic perfectly. And we also get to see a mother-daughter relationship from an outsider's perspective. Despite all of Christine's kind of shitty behavior sometimes, we can see that her mum definitely isn't right all the time. A lot of the time her mum is actually in the wrong. Christine's mum did seem to have the best of intentions, but she was extremely harsh on her daughter, extremely hypercritical, and towards the end of the film, borderlining on emotionally abusive. And when I was watching the film, as someone who has a pretty good relationship with their mum, I didn't necessarily hate Christine's mum. I could understand why she was acting the way she was, and you could tell that she genuinely loved her daughter, 
but I was like, oh my god, she's horrible. Like, she's really horrible. But a lot of people didn't realise that Christine's mum's behaviour was out of the ordinary because their mums have acted in extremely similar ways. You know, how are you meant to know that your mum being extremely critical to you and borderlining on emotionally abusive is wrong when you don't know anything else? And this is exactly why it is so important to represent and portray all different types of struggles within film and TV. Because the more people talk about their toxic relationships they have with their mum, the more likely they're going to be resolved. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I don't know how to finish this video off because this wasn't meant to be an advice video. This is just meant to be sort of a general exploration of mummy issues. But I know that a lot of people watching this are gonna, it's, it's gonna connect with them. And I just am asking you guys one favour, just be kind in the comments. If you want to share your story, feel free. If you want to give advice, feel free. I want the comments to be a safe space for everyone. 